Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about how you can predict the creep response of thermoplastics. I'm specifically going to talk about polycarbonate, a particular grade of Lexan that I started a number of years ago. And I went back and I redid this case study that I worked on back then using modern software. And uh, I think the results are pretty interesting and I'm going to talk about that here in our discussion. Um, so the idea here is uh, we have data for a specific type of lexin, I want to go ahead and come up with a material model for it and compare what the different material model choices behave like. So uh, here's the pr product brochure that I found to work with here. And um, if I go to a specific page here and see if I can find um, the data, one of the data sources for something like this, you can see that it is a creep strain versus time. And when I started this case study, I extracted this data and I had some other data that was part of this brochure. And I want to now show you what the different material models uh, do when, when I apply this data set to this. So um, before I do that, uh, let's plot the data again here. Uh, in my old presentation, I was going to switch to these two figures here. So this is the creep strain versus time data that, that I extracted. What's interesting about it, if you plot creep strain versus time for different stress levels, you see the higher the stress, of course, the faster it creeps and the more it creeps. But if you normalize this by stress, and then you get the creep compliance as a function of time for different stress levels. If you do it that way, you'll see that these curves don't superimpose. And this is directly indicating that this material is not linear viscoelastic. A linear viscoelastic material has a creep compliance that's independent of the stress, uh, but we don't have that here. So clearly, this is a nonlinear viscoelastic material. So that's always a little hint for you when you work with creep data. Take a look at the data itself and see what it looks like. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at a few different simple material models. The first one I will start with is a linear viscoelastic material model. So here I have set up a linear viscoelastic material model. There are many different choices one can work with here. Um, use the Abacus version of it, ANSYS version, LS Dyna, etc. I'm using the M calibration software to demonstrate how this works. Um, so here is my already calibrated model. I'm going to just show you the results uh, to simplify things here. Uh, I have a number of load cases. This is a monotonic test that was extracted from that product brochure that I mentioned earlier. And then we have the creep strains here. Um, and um, you can see on the left, I have plotted stress versus strain. And on the right, it's time versus strain. So when you have creep data, there, there are two ways you can work with creep data in M calibration. If you have data in terms of uh, the time, the strain, and the stress. So you have the time column, the strain column, and the stress column. And in this case, when you have creep, the stress column is more or less constant, as, as one would expect. Uh, if you have data in that format, what you do is you read in this data as a load case of experimental data types. Um, so that's time, stress, and strain. Um, but if you have creep data, sometimes you have the data, you don't have this a specific column with uh, stress, you have just time and strain. You can read that in two here by uh, using uh, the creep data option as the load case. Then you have just two columns, and then you have to specify uh, the stress itself and how long it took for the test machine to reach the start of the creep test. Um, so that's how you set it up. Um, you, know, you, you would pick one of these two options depending on what data you have, obviously. Um, so, so that's what I have here. And then I just went ahead and I picked a material model here. In this first case, I picked a linear viscoelastic Neohookian material model. And uh, I did add a Poisson's ratio load case to calibrate the compressibility D1 parameter to simplify that a little bit uh, and make sure I have a reasonable value of that. And then when I set this up, I picked, and you have crypt data, you've got to think carefully about what, what number of Prony series terms you use. I picked six in this case. It's a relatively small number, but it, it, it's sort of good enough for predicting this response, I think. Um, and I set the tau values to be reasonable based on the data that I have in mind. And then I just ran the calibration. Um, if I run it once now, I'll see that the prediction looks like this. Um, the predictions are not very good, as you can see. 
the average error is 14.7%, which by itself is not so bad, perhaps. We see that the monotonic curve goes straight up, not rolling over like it does experimentally. And we also see that um, we do have higher creep with, um, with higher stress, but the shape of these curves is not right. So it's, it's a, it really is not the choice of material model that you probably want to use in a case like this. We can do better than that. So let me try another one here. I'm going to take an ANSYS linear elastic with creep. So let me open this file. So what is this linear elastic with creep? Hey, well, this is a material model where you have basically just a creep model. So in ANSYS, you can have a linear elastic, in this, in this case, strain-dependent creep, uh, strain-hardening creep uh, here. And uh, if you do that, you can calibrate this model to this data set. It, it works uh, reasonably well, as you can see. In, it has an error of 9.9% in this case. And it's, it's not so good, but it's not so bad either. It's, it's better than linear viscoelastic in this case. We see that the creep curves to the right are predicted better than for the linear viscoelastic material model. But overall, it's not really that awesome as we can see here. Um, and uh, that, that's, that's, it's a choice to, to select this, of course, if you're interested in this, but it's not the best choice, as I will show. There are other things that will work even better. So let me open up another one. Here is a ANSYS MISO creep model. So this is a linear elastic plasticity plus creep. So it's similar to the previous one, except that I also I'll turn it off. Uh, activated plasticity. And then I, I used just six uh, linear segments in this plasticity model. And then I have this strain behavior uh, in the creep response. And then I can just calibrate it. So the easy part here is just calibration. Once you select the material model, you can quickly calibrate it. And if I run this one, we'll see that now the curve starts to roll over due to the plasticity. That's nice, of course. We get a, an average error of 6.5% approximately, which is not too bad. It matches the, the overall trends of this data set relatively well. It also predicts the creep response pretty well. The, the change in slope of the creep curves increases, uh, as you can see here, with the creep stress. So this is uh, surprisingly good, I guess you could say, uh, for this data set. Let's try some other material models. Let's go over to a nonlinear viscoelastic material model. So, let me open a material model for the uh, Bergstrom Boys model. So this is a material model that I developed a number of years ago for rubber. So this is not really meant for thermoplastic materials, but it's available in all major finite element codes. So it's, it's interesting to take a look at it. I set it up here. I calibrated it. Um, and here are the parameters. This happened to be the polyumod version of the Bergstrom Boys BB model. And if you run it, you'll see that it's, it actually is surprisingly bad in some sense. It, it captures the response uh, with an error of about 12%. Um, and uh, it's a little bit too simplistic for this thermoplastic. And that's kind of a rule of thumb that I usually say, that when you're simulating the response of thermoplastics, you shouldn't really use the BB model. You want to use a higher number of networks in your viscoplastic material model in order to accurately capture the response. So. So what is the model that really works then? Well, I have a good model here that I'm going to show you. So this is a, a material model that I call the TMV model. This is my current favorite material model, and I've used it in, in a number of our, my other videos here. So the TMV model is part of the PolyUMOD library. TMV stands for three network viscoplastic model. Uh, I use this. This is a modular model. I use three networks here. Uh, so if you're familiar with this and seen some of my other do documents and videos, you can see that this is uh, a yo hyperelastic model and two flow elements in parallel. And I just calibrate this. I don't use all the fancy features that are available here. I use a, a yield uh, evolution response in addition to power law stre stress behavior in the flow behavior. So that's kind of where I set up here. And if I run this once, we'll see what it looks like. It's a nonlinear viscoplastic material model, and the error is about 3.8%. So it's about half the error of any of the other models that I showed. Particularly interesting, I think, is the figure to the right showing the creep predictions are actually quite good for all stress levels. So this will be the most accurate of the models that I talked about uh, so far. And this is my recommended model. Uh, 
for this material as we can see here. It is more accurate than the other ones. So to summarize and to plot this, I plotted the data here. I put in the error for the different models and this graph show you how it basically scales. I would certainly say that the linear viscoelastic thermal, the error is just too large. There's really no reason to use that for even this relatively small strain behavior of polycarbonate in this case. Um, the burst and voice model was not very good. The creep models uh, are options, I would say, but why use them when there is something that is significantly better, in this case, the TMV models, which would be my recommended model for this material. Um, so that's how I would work with creep behavior, predicting creep response for thermoplastic materials. It's really important to have good experimental data, enough experimental data. Once you have that, though, you can explore different material models Make sure that it captures the, the behavior that you're interested in for your particular situation you're, you're studying. And uh, don't forget that some of the more modern material models, the, the viscoplastic material models, are actually quite good, even for smaller strains when it comes to these types of predictions. Um, if you have any questions, ask them below.